Hello everyone, it's Elliot here. Today is a very special occasion because it marks the day that I am finally doing a collection tour. I'm going to show you around my entire Blu-ray collection that I have behind me. And people have been asking for this for years, I'm not going to lie. They've been asking me on YouTube, on Instagram, in the street by Carrier Pigeon. People have just been asking me, when are you going to show your Blu-rays? When are you going to show every single one of your Blu-rays to us? Now, today isn't quite that day, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an overview of my collection. Think of this as a bit of a test run. I'm going to show you my collection, and then if you want me to go into more detail, if you want me to show you each title individually and talk a bit about each one, that video would be six hours long, but I'm willing to do it if enough people demand it. Oh yeah, before we hop on into this, if you're new here, my name's Elliot. Please do consider subscribing if you like videos about Blu-rays and the Criterion Collection and everything in this video, basically. Oh yeah, and I'll address the one thing that I'm sure many people will bring up in the comments, is that a lot of these films are still in their shrink wrap packaging. That is because I haven't seen every film in my collection. And I'm very open about that, and I, I don't really hold any shame about that. But I know some people will find, you know, might even take offence at that. And if you do, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to cause you offence. But just stick with me. Yes, some of these films are still in their shrink wrapping. That's just because I haven't got around to watching them yet. It doesn't necessarily mean I've never seen the film before. It just means I've never opened the Blu-ray and watched it. So I'm going to get into it now. I'm going to hop out of this chair, pick up this camera... I won't be in the video anymore. I'm literally going to turn it around and show you everything in the collection. Bear in mind the audio won't be as good as this and the picture's going to be a bit shaky because I'm going to be carrying this heavy camera. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? Get comfy, grab a drink and yeah, enjoy the video. Next time you see my face will be at the end of the video. So I'll see you then. Okay, welcome everyone. This is obviously my entire Blu-ray collection. Uh, I say entire, actually. Some of it is still in storage at my parents' house because I recently moved into this house uh, late last year. So there's still a few Blu-rays in storage, but to be honest, most of it is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an overview, because uh, obviously this is my backdrop usually for my YouTube videos. So I'll give you an overview of what's in here. Let's get a bit closer and we'll go through each bit of the collection one by one. Right, so for this collection video, I think it's going to be best if I go from this top left corner and then kind of move all the way down to the bottom right corner down here. You'll see there are these three shelves that are separate to the units that I have here. Uh, these basically just have some miscellaneous bits and some box sets that would not fit uh, in the shelves here. So I'll just run through what's on these three shelves first. Okay, so moving up close here, we've got the Karismaki box set, Louis Mao, Agnes Varda, they're brilliant. Uh, Roy Anderson set, this is now out of print. Uh, Charlie Chaplin, got a Star Wars box set, Citizen Kane. Uh, got some other special editions and some steel books. I recently spoke about these steelbooks in my 4K steelbook video. So if you want, check out that. I've got some more box sets and I've got the Zatoichi Criterion Collection box set here. This is basically acting as a bookend at the moment because if it wasn't there, then all of these would topple over, which we do not want. <laughs> so moving down to the second row, I've got some BFI box sets there. Um, particularly I love the Rossellini sets. These two are brilliant. Uh, I've got this one. This is the Napoleon special edition set. Brilliant, brilliant film. I know many people are hoping that Napoleon comes to the Criterion Collection one day. Uh, I could imagine it will. It's just a, a case of when, I guess. Then we start getting into some Arrow Academy box sets. Uh, like I've got the Woody Allen ones here. Then moving down to the next row, Got the Decalogue, got a few other ones. Uh, got the Zha Zhang Ke set, that's now out of print. Great Chinese filmmaker. Got the Taisho trilogy from Suzuki, not cracked it open yet, but I need to get around to that one. As you'll see, a few of these box sets are in the shrink wrap. <laughs> I do apologise. 
Um, another out of print one, Family Values from Hirokazu Koreeda. Koreeda is one of my favourite filmmakers. Uh, absolutely love his films, so I'm very happy to have that in the collection. And then moving down here, I'll just show you what I've got here. This is a Clockwork Orange print that my sister got me for Christmas, which I really do appreciate having that there. Uh, I have the Ingmar Bergman Criterion uh, big box set. Um, you've all seen that before. And I've got the Godzilla Criterion spy number 1000. And then here, I'll just show you these. This is my Star Wars Imperial Assault board game uh, collection with all the expansions. Um, totally off topic, but this is a great board game, especially if you like Star Wars. So I would thoroughly recommend that for all the uh, Star Wars fans. So I'll move over now to the actual bookcases themselves with all of these films in. Okay, so I'm just going to get to a better angle. So what you'll see is I've got all of the Arrow video sets across the top of this first one. I'll, what I'm going to do is, these are actually two units. There's one unit here, and then there's one unit here. So I'll go through all of this one, because this is how it's organised, and then I will go through all of this one. So they're in, they're in blocks of three, essentially. So this first one, I've got all my Arrow video box sets at the top. So you see these are all the special editions, the ones that are in the hard cases. So I'll just do a quick overview of them. Got the ring box set, the Laraz one, not cracked it open yet. Uh, Cat and Nine Tails, that's the Argento set. De Niro De Palma, Two Hills Have Eyes. Uh, Nightbreed, Last House on the Left. Uh, I've got Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Candyman. Thing, yeah, City of the Living Dead, Waterworld, the second Battles Without Honour and Humanity set. Unfortunately, don't have the first one. I missed that before it went out of print. Uh, Sartana set, I've talked about that before. Robocop, Videodrome, uh, got the Female Prisoner Scorpion, uh, two Sage and Suzuki sets, American Werewolf in London, Hellraiser, Killer Dames, uh, Fear and Loathing and Bloodbath, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and the last of the Arrow ones here is the Outlaw Gangster VIP collection. Okay, so directly under the Arrow video sets, I have my Masters of Cinema collection. So these are all spine numbered. Uh, I don't know if you can make it out, but there is a spine number on here. Gosh, I can't get my autofocus to work. But yeah, basically, so, if you look here, they're, they're, they're all numbered, so I've got them all from number one up to... I can't remember what I'm complete up to. I'm not going to go through each of these one by one, but this is Masters of Cinema, more Masters of Cinema here. Again, more Masters of Cinema. So if I get to the end of these three top shelves, this has taken us up to spine number 63, okay? which is Simon Killer. Then moving down here, I've got more Masters of Cinema. I've got some of my favourite films there. Serpico, Nashville, uh, Too Late Blues, that's an early Cassavetes film. Uh, moving on, more Masters of Cinema. I love how colourful the spines are on these as well. They look really good on the shelves. Uh, more Masters of Cinema. So the end of this second row takes us up to Rocco and his brothers, which is spine number 133. So that's like the first 133 Masters of Cinema without without any of the box set titles. They're a bit lower. I'm going to show you that, these down here. Then I've got more Masters of Cinema starting off this third shelf. You'll notice here, Masters of Cinema, but past this point, it was actually up here with a touch of Zen. They started doing slip covers. Well, actually, no, that's a lie, because they did a slipcover for Metropolis, and it really stuck out. It was really strange that they did a slipcover, and they never did a slipcover for all of these, and all of these, up until Touch of Zen, which is spine number 130. So they did one for that, and then since then they've kind of just done it a bit sporadically. 
because they did one for West Front 1918 and Kamradashaft. Uh, these are both in the Criterion Collection as well, actually. And then they did one for Cure. Uh, didn't do one for Haosu. That's a shame. Uh, but they did one for Legend of the Mountain, which is another King Ku film. Um, and yeah, and then down here, this is when they kind of go a bit out of order. Because Man with a Movie Camera box set, this is actually spine number 134. So this should be up here. The reason it's not is because it wouldn't fit correctly in with all the other films. So I've just kind of lumped some of the box sets down here. Got the Buster Keaton Volume 1, High Noon, Fuller at Fox, still sealed, need to get to it. Then, then they started doing these for the some of the single titles. They started doing hard, hard cases. So here's the African Queen. And then this, which I just got very recently, Fistful of Dynamite, Sergio Leone film. And then down here, got some more Eureka box sets. Um, Iron Monkey. Uh, this this isn't a box set, this is just a slip cover. Some of these now are non-Masters of Cinema, although Last Waltz is. Last Waltz was spy number 200. This was a bit of a momentous one. Got the Police Story, Jackie Chan set. Got Project A, Project A Part 2. Once Upon a Time in China trilogy, Cujo. Got the Troll release from Eureka. Uh, more box sets here. So we've got Showa. And then this. This is probably the rarest Blu-ray that I own. Or rarest Blu-ray set, I should say. This is the late Mizuguchi set. Uh, this went out of print very quickly. And I had to pick this up. Um, second hand, well it's second hand, well it's new, but someone was selling it on so I had to spend a lot of money to get it and I just can't bring myself to open it. I bought it, I bought it because I mainly wanted to watch Ugetsu and Sancho. So I bought it and then by the time I'd actually got round to wanting to watch those films, uh, Criterion had done Blu-ray releases so I thought there's just not much point opening it. I want to save that for a momentous occasion. Uh, maybe I'll open this live on a video on YouTube. Maybe that would be like a, a celebration, say when I get 2,000 subscribers or something. So maybe I'll do that one day. Buster Keaton Short Film Collection, Scorsese World Cinema Project, Early Minot, Edvard Munch, and then Passion of Joan of Arc. And then this is pretty much the end of the Eureka stuff. Last Eureka film is the Montage November release, which is really interesting. I haven't picked up any other Montage films yet. Then here you'll see I've got, so I've got this display, I've got like a little, a little stand so I can display films when I want. Currently just displaying Robert Altman's images from Arrow Academy, great film. Uh, you'll see here I've got two titles from the South Korean label uh, Plain Archive. These are the only two I've got. I've got Jim Jarmusch's Patterson and Denis Villeneuve's Ensendie. Two films that I really love. Uh, I decided to import these special editions because they do look really nice. So that's Patterson and then this is Ensendie. And then yeah, there's images from Robert Altman. I'm going to get onto the Arrow Academy titles in a bit. Um, let's just move lower on these now. So you'll see this is where the Arrow Video selection starts. Now Arrow Video titles, these are not spine numbered or anything. So you'll notice that these are all alphabetical because we start with the addiction and then we go through, through the A's and the B's and the rest. What I like to do with these as well is when I've watched a particular title, uh, I do like to display the reversible sleeves. The reason I display the reversible sleeves is often I like the artwork that's on the other side and they also don't have the ratings logo on the spine. Because for example, if you look at this, the beast within, 
This has a ratings logo. This doesn't. So this looks much better. So we're moving through the Arrow video now. These are all the Arrow video titles. I'll probably do a video on the Arrow video stuff separately. I'll go through each title. Um, let's move down here. There are the D's and the E's and the F's. I do have an awful lot of Arrow video stuff. Arrow video, or Arrow in general, including the Academy stuff, is one of my favourite labels. Some people ask, how did I afford to get all of these Arrow videos? Well, I used to work in FOP. Now, FOP is a, it's a store here in the UK, which is part of HMV. And what I would do is, when we would have a sale on in the shop, um, obviously I would get discount on these Blu-rays. So I would get discount on top of the sale prices. For example, if I pick one of these, okay, so here you'll see Lisa and the Devil still has the six pound sticker from FOP. Because basically what I do is I don't open the shrink wrap until I'm about to watch the film. It's kind of a way for me to see how much of my collection I've actually watched as well. But yeah, so I would get discount on top of this. So instead of it being £6, it would cost me £4. So for £4 each, basically what I would do is I would save up a portion of my earnings and then when there was a sale in the store, I would basically just buy everything else that I wanted. So you're looking at most of these Arrow videos now. These were pretty much all bought for £4 each. There are quite a few that I bought at full price when they came out because, you know, I really, really wanted to see those those titles straight away. For the ones that I didn't mind waiting on, I would just wait and then I would buy them for £4 each. So I'll move a bit lower now. So this is still all Arrow video single titles in the clear cases. That's the S's, still on the S's, the T's. So here with zombie flesh eaters, we reach the last Amaray clear case for the Arrow video titles. Then we get into all of the ones that have slip covers on. I just kind of keep these separate. Um, I don't know why, it's just, I think it's just so it looks more uniform. So you'll see all of these ones have slip covers. Some of these as well, I, I didn't even know had slip covers. Like one that I don't see a lot of people having is this one. This is Thief, which has a slip cover. I think that was quite a rare one to have. So yeah, this takes us to the end of Arrow video with Weird Science. What a film. That is the end of the Arrow video stuff. Gosh, I'm out of breath doing this. <laughs> it's taking me out of breath doing all of this talking and carrying the camera. So then we begin on the BFI titles. These are all the BFI Blu-rays. Uh, quite a lot of these titles are out on other labels as well, like Criterion do a lot of, a lot of these. Um, for example, here's one that's on Criterion, Life is Sweet, uh, which I've seen many times. I've just not actually cracked open this particular Blu-ray. Uh, Tess, Tess is on Criterion as well. Um, an Actor's Revenge is on Criterion. All of the Cassavetes films are in Criterion. Um, Beauty and the Beast. This is actually a new restoration. So this is an improvement upon the Criterion, quite interestingly. But yeah, this is just all BFI up to here. And then we move down. This is the bottom. So this, this is the last one. Uh, so here you've got some Ozu titles, if I get up close, you've got Ozu, some other different ones. And then these here, this is a series that the BFI do called The Flip Side. So again, I have a lot of these still in shrink wrap. These are spine numbered. These are all like UK rarities. A lot of these are like films that were shown on television or films that were lost. Uh, entirely. One of my favourites is this one, Shalkin the Painter. Very weird gothic horror thing that was shown at Christmas. And then we move along, got some more, some more random BFIs. And then at the bottom here, this is just 
these are just totally random. Some are steel books, uh, some 4K discs. So we've covered all of these and we've covered all of these here. So they've all been covered. We now just have this whole case to cover and then we're done. That's pretty much my whole collection. So let's get cracking. Like my arrow box sets on this side, this is where I keep my indicator box sets. These aren't in any order, some are just up here. Uh, the, some are still sealed as well. So you've got some indicator and then, oh actually here, these are some second sight box sets. So you've got, for example, you've got the High Mat Trilogy, Berlin Alexander Platz, uh, Colour of Pomegranates, Take Shelter, uh, Flight of the Navigator on the end as well. So yeah, there's some second sight uh, hard case box sets. Then we move down, we have, sorry about the light glare here. Uh, we've got my indicator one. So these all go by spine number and these are all limited edition ones as well. I don't have any of the standard edition reprints. But yeah, starting off with Christine, so that's spine number one. Then these are all indicator all along here, up to here. This takes us to spine 106. Now there isn't 100 films here, but it takes us to spine 106 because obviously that's including a lot of the spine numbers that are in these box sets here. So 106 is missing. And then we go down a shelf. Got some more spine numbers here. A lot of these, you can see they're still shrink wrapped. These are the ones that I got in my recent indicator haul, which I did a video on. So yeah, lots of these haven't been watched yet, like track 29. So we go along here and we get to the last indicator title, which is this one. This is Time Without Pity, which I got at HMV a few weeks ago, which I've still not watched because that is spine number 154. That is the end of Indicator. So Indicator takes up basically the top shelf and then the next one and a half shelves. So Indicator is there. Now the observant ones amongst you have seen that this is where criterion start. The way I organize my criterions is I basically don't organize them. <laughs> They're not organized particularly. What you'll see is I have all of the box sets at the top. And then as we go down, I have the standard Scanavo cases. So if I start here, you'll see these are all the box sets and the digi packs. And then if I move down here again, you've got more box sets and digi packs. Um, a lot of these ones that are sealed, these are ones I got in the Barnes & Noble sale in November. Uh, I saved up a lot of money and I basically spent it all at once and I've not managed to get through everything yet. So all of the box sets and digipacks go up to this. This is Bob Dylan, uh, Don't Look Back. So after those, we begin to get into the Criterion uh, Scanavo cases, like uh, Brighter Summer Day. Like I said, these are not organised in any particular way. They're not organised by spine number, they're not alphabetical, they're not done by filmmaker. These have pretty much just been put on randomly and I do need to organise them because sometimes it can be very hard to actually find a particular title. So yeah, I'll just kind of go over them just so you can see which ones are in my collection. And I'll move down here to the next one. These are a mixture of the UK and US releases as well. So you'd see that, for example, Punch Drunk Love is a UK one because you've got the ratings logo here. Whereas, for example, my Winnipeg, which is next to, is just a, a US one because this isn't available in the UK. So yeah. We go along here, along here. Down here, 
more criterions more criterions there and then the criterions end on this shelf and this is where the Arrow Academy uh, titles begin so again Arrow Academy not in any order at all I should really reorder them so they're just starting here with La Grande Bouffe and then going along and along some over there as well and down here got some Arrow Academies Arrow Academies here and like I mentioned the box sets at the start they are on that shelf up there and now sat on the floor <laughs> what I've got over here is the second run Blu-ray collection a lot of these are great world cinema films quite a few of these now have been put out by Criterion as well like I mentioned in a recent video films like Fabulous Baron Munchausen this is in the recent Karel Zeman uh, box set and then the Cremator, this is due to come out on Criterion in a couple of months. So Criterion seems to be taking a few of the titles that Second Run have released here in the UK. I know one title that many people want to come to Criterion is Daisies. These here are my HMV premium collection titles. So I've got basically one, I've almost got two whole rows of these titles and I think I'm almost complete with this collection. So you'll see, if I just take one out, the first one, this is them. Um, I don't know if you can make, if the camera is going to let you see this, but they are spine numbered. They are spine numbered. So... As all collectors will know, if something's got a spine number, it makes you want to get them all. A lot of these are Warner Brothers films. You'll see the Warner Brothers logo uh, at the bottom here. A lot of these have been released in the US on Warner Archive. And it just so happens that HMV have acquired the rights to put them out on their own Blu-rays. So it's good because we get a lot of the titles that have been released on Warner Archive in the US, we get them, you know, transposed to here. So titles like Out of the Past, the Jacques Turner film noir film. Uh, that's a great one. And then, sorry, having difficulty putting this back in with one hand. And of course, Barry Lyndon, my favorite film. Of course, I've got it in the Criterion Collection as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty much complete with these there's just a few i'm missing which i'm going to wait for another sale on they're quite good releases and you can get them pretty cheap when hmv do their sale they tend to do them two for 15 pounds and again when i was working at fop i used to get discount on them as well they would work out about five pounds each for me so great value for these because you know you, you get the film and then they're all in like a special edition uh you know slip case thing and they come with art cards and stuff like that so yeah premium collection takes it down to there the rest is pretty much all random stuff it's all like steel books you'll see here i've got my studio ghibli steelbook collection yeah it's just all steel books and then just some random random bits i've picked up that i've just not got around to watching yet um, talking of random bits I was in Germany in November uh, not November no I was in Germany in January and I decided to get Charlie's Angels in German uh, which is gosh I'm going to butcher this is it three angel for Charlie vol power I don't know but I got that in a Saturn, Saturn is basically Germany's HMV. And it's great because they have tons of steel books and uh, digipacks and media books, lots of special editions in Germany. 
Like I mentioned earlier, this video is pretty much just an overview. I've not gone through every single title in here because it would literally take me hours and hours. But I hope you've got a pretty good overview of it. And if there's any particular thing, like if you want me to talk specifically about Second Run or Arrow Academy or the Criterion Collection or Indicator or Masters of Cinema or Steelbooks or, or whatever, you know, if you want me to talk about a specific thing, uh, I would be more than happy to. Okay, that was my complete collection, in a sense. Yes, I didn't talk about every title. I know, I will do that in the future if enough of you want it. But I hope that's given you a bit of an overview of what I personally own in my collection. Like I mentioned, pretty much everything is there except for a few things that are in storage. But this is mostly it. This is my collection. And I like to think that it's a bit of an expression of who I am and what films I'm into. If you liked seeing my collection, please do let me know in the comments below. And like I've said a few times, if you want to see more, if you want to see me go through a particular section, whether it's the Criterion Collection or Indicator or Arrow Video or Steelbooks or whatever, do let me know in the comments and I can make a separate video devoting more time to each film within those particular collections. Okay, I've been talking enough now, so I'm going to leave you be. Thanks very much for the support. The continued support on the channel really does mean the world to me. Yeah, I'll see you in another video very soon talking about Blu-rays. So keep well and keep watching great films.